Um, the, the title of my remarks is going to be on the changing racial and ethnic ancestry of blacks in the United States. And this, to a certain extent, gets to your question about what's the proper term. Is it black? Is it African American? Uh, historically, in the United States, there were very few voluntary descendants of Africa who came to the United States. Right? The overwhelming majority of us were brought during, during ch ch chattel slavery. However, since the 1960s, we've seen an extraordinary increase in voluntary black immigration into the United States. And this is changing the racial, uh, 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 sort of changing the ethnic ancestry of blacks in the United States. And I want to talk about the implications of that, but, but there's, a, there's a, another trend as well that's occurring at the same time. And, and that is, once again, historically, if, if you had one drop of black blood, if, if any of your ancestors were black going back five, six, seven generations, you were considered to be black. Uh, but since 2000, the federal government has changed the definition of what it means to be black. So now if you have parents of a different race, if you have a black white child, uh, a black Asian child, they're no longer actually considered black. Uh, they fall into sort of a multiracial category or two or more races category. Uh, and it, indeed, the other historical thing was that black people could not define their race. Race was a socially ascribed characteristic. Uh, up to 1960, 99.4% of Americans were either black or white, 99.4%. So with the notion that any person with any black blood was black, you could instantly tell a person's race based on their appearance. But, but now in 2015, we've had substantial immigration from Latin America, substantial immigration from, from South Asia, substantial immigration from the Middle East, as well as increases in multiracials. So now it's not easy to tell a person's race based on their physical appearance. Uh, so many multiracials, and you'll hear from my son who's a multiracial in a minute, but also light-skinned blacks are being asked by others, what are you? And therefore, they have some control over their racial identity. So those are the two themes I want to talk about. So I'm going to start with black immigrants. Uh, so can you go next slide? OK. Um, in, in 1970, on, only 1.1% 1 .1 percent of the black population was foreign born. This increases to 4.9% in 1990 to 8.8% .8 in, in 2010, and actually goes up to 10% in 2012. So right now, one out of, uh, out of 10 blacks in the United States are foreign born. I indeed, if you just go to New York, uh, a majority of the blacks you see in New York City are actually foreign born. So you're not actually interacting with African Americans, you're interacting with Nigerians, with Ghanaians, with Jamaicans, um, uh, with Dominicans. Um, and we're seeing substantial increases too in black multiracials, that is, blacks with a non black parent, black white parentage, black Asian parentage. Um, those percentages are set to increase by 80% between 2010 and 2020. Uh, so can we go to the next slide? Okay. Um, here's one of the things that's happening. So if you think about Dr. M. Becker, one of the things Dr. M. Becker thought would, could lead to an end of untouchability was intercaste marriage. We're now seeing substantial interracial marriage among the black slash African American population in the United States. So you can see here in 1970, of all blacks who were married, only 1.1% were married outside of the race. That increases to 2.4% in 1980, 4.1% in 1990, 7% in 2000. Uh, in 2010, it increases to 9%. But, 
but but let me add this is of all blacks who are married um, so younger people the ones in the prime childbearing ages are even much more likely to marry across the race uh, in 2012 for example one in four black males that married, 25%, married outside of the race. Uh, for black women, it was about 9.3%. And, and we continue to see that black males are two to three times more likely to marry outside of the race. So with this substantial increase in interracial marriage, uh, we're now seeing substantial increases in the black multiracial population. So. If we take the latest census figures from 2012, you can see there, if you're looking at ages 20 to 24, only about 7.9% of the black population is multiracial. But you see how that increases. So that if we're talking about under the age of five, almost 20% of blacks are mixed race. Uh, if these current cont trends continue, within a generation or two, a majority of the black population in the United States will actually be mixed race. And because they're mixed race, they will more and more assert an identity that's different from that of African Americans. Uh, so let me now start to talk about that. Uh, there's some very distinct differences between the cultural identity of black immigrants and the cultural identity of African Americans. Uh, black immigrants immigrate to the United States for the same reason everyone else does. They're optimistic about coming to the United States. Um, their home culture or their cultures are, are, are indoctrinated into them in their home society, not in the United States, and not influenced by the history of the struggle against racism in the United States. Um, indeed, as I indicated earlier, I have been to Africa ten times, South Africa four times. So when I'm in South Africa, I'm a black immigrant in a country with a history of racism of black people who are not my people. So when I'm in South Africa, I don't see myself as connected to the black South Africans. My concern is for my African Americans back home. And whites interact with me very differently than they interact with native South African, black South Africans. There's no history of discrimination against us. We're good friends. We can joke. They don't worry about what they say. I don't worry about what I say. Uh, and this is what's going on with black immigrants in the United States as well. Uh, they're simply having a very different experience with race uh, than your African Americans. And of course, their percentages are increasing at fairly significant numbers. Um, with respect to black multiracials, uh, the research on the racial identity of multiracials tends to show that black multiracials have a very different racial identity from African Americans. Uh, they generally tend to fall into one of three kinds. One, they either assert, assert that they're multiracial. Second, that they'll assert that they're black. Uh, or third is that they will assert that they're just simply beyond race. They're non-racial. They don't think about race. They don't, consider race. Um, in, indeed, a few will even take the white ancestry or Asian ancestry. Um, and, and also, within the United States, the black family has fragmented since the 1960s. Uh, we're at a point now where almost 70 percent of our children are raised in single-parent homes. So when you put together that black males are more likely to uh, have interracial relationships with white females. And with the, black, the breakdown of the black home, it means many black multiracials are actually being raised by single white females. And they therefore are having a very different racial uh, identity than the traditional African American. Uh, so all of this seems to suggest that we are really watching some fundamental shifts in the traditional struggle uh, of the African American uh, in the United States, and in, in, in some real way, uh, we are watching substantial interracial marriages, um, and the trend of those continues to accelerate 
as the younger people get older and older. Thank you. Well, the, the impact, I think, the impact, I think, we're already seeing it. So there, there's less talk about race in the United States um, bec and more talk about new race neutrality individualism because, I mean, of course, as your black multiracials grow up, they're less and less invested in it. The second thing that's going on is, is with respect to the black immigrants. Um, just like I, I've interacted with Dalek communities in London, uh, in New York, in Washington, D.C., right? Their concern is about what's happening to Dalits here. They're not engaged in a struggle in the United States. They're engaged in what's happening here. And we see the same with African and Caribbean immigrants. Their concern is about what's going on in Ghana, what's going on in Nigeria, not the struggles of African Americans. And, and probably the thing that's, that, um, uh, and I guess I should probably note this, uh, because as I said, I pointed to this earlier, the number of African-American males who are on this trip. What we're seeing at our upper level, our elite educational institution, is the blacks there are primarily black multiracials and black immigrants. So if you go to Harvard, if you go to Yale, if you go to Columbia, probably less than 20% of the blacks are African American and 80% of them are going to be black immigrants or black multiracials. So that means going out into the future, the African Americans who've been writing this scholarship for the last 50, 60 years are slowly uh, fading away from the scene. 